Okay, so 64-bit um, mode doesn't really have segmentation, but it does support FS and GS. Uh, FS um, is kept pointing to the current task record, task, uh, task structure, and uh, the, the first um, address in the task structure is a self-address uh, pointer. That we'll get into that in a second. Anyway, so a task record has stuff like uh, there's one window per task, and these are the window dimensions and position. Um, the registers when you when the scheduler swaps it um, tells the GS segment points to the current CPU structure, and uh, this is the task CPU. It has a draw. It has the callbacks for drawing, and it has a. Um, Anyway, this you want to get familiar with it. Um, I add user data for that's for you to play around with. Um, it's not really a workable solution. If you want to add extra data, you have to uh, create a frame in the uh, symbol table. Anyway, uh, um, that's the proper way to do it. Unless you're me and you can modify the structure. So uh, if we say uh, class rep D um, this is a uh, all the um, information the compiler has about classes and stuff is still available so the class name comes first um, so uh, we want C uh, task and then you give uh, um, you do your debugging at the command line uh, anyway uh, so that this this will uh, dump a, a, a structure um, dynamically. So um, it it knows all the compiler information about this uh, class, and it uh, shows all the members, and you can uh, you can go deeper. Um, so uh, the FS segment register is kept pointing to. Uh, oh, let's let's look at. Uh, Uh, the first one is self-addressed. Um, see, well, you can't really, you know, you wouldn't know the difference. Anyway, so uh, so the FS segment register is kept pointing to the current task. The GS is kept pointing to the current CPU structure. If you want to see what a CPU structure looks like, um, it has a, a number. That's the number of the CPU. And it has the idle. You need that when you're uh, scheduling. Um, you monitor how how much uh, load it has. That's the um, complement of the CPU load. Um, that's that's pretty much. Uh, it has a interrupt descriptor table, task register. Um, it has a Seth task. Seth is the ch child of Adam, and there's one special task on each uh, CPU. That's the Seth task, and it needs an idle task too. Anyway. Uh, so uh, where was I? Um, so the the um, the FS and GS have to be changed with uh, model right model specific register, and then it gets really tricky. Uh, let's look at how uh, We want to get the um, FSRIP. Um, what it does is it uh, this uh, um, 32-bit displacements are RIP relative, um, which the addressing mode is inconvenient. So what you have to do is uh, you have to uh, XOR to get a zero. And then um, load an offset off of zero instead of just an offset. You know, and ideally, if, if this were 32-bit mode, you would do it like this. But in our case, you have to do it with this XOR zero. And there are times when uh, you have to get the self-addressed. Uh, the the FS is the the first uh, value is the self-addressed value. Anyway, so uh, um, 
so the class rep D, the document D, uh, FS, um, this shows, uh, you can modify this live, um, you can also modify class rep D, um, you can put a size, uh, so, uh, the window coordinates are somewhere in here and we can modify it. Um, these are live widgets. Um, um, so uh, um, to show that it's live, uh, let's let's go uh, let's go back to whoops. Okay, so uh, so this document has a, um, a widget. Um, it, 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 when it was created with a uh, control L will create a widget. Create a widget. If you do text and you can say uh, nothing and uh, define string if we say my define uh, we just created a uh, a text that's mine to find. Now if we say uh, my define help then if we come in here it says help. Um, so uh, these are uh, string indirection and it works uh, lose those is for uh, dynamic documents not printing. I decided unlike everybody else I'm not doing a stream I'm not doing, there's not a standard in, not a standard out. These are uh, dynamic uh, structures. Um, this is not a, this is not a um, general purpose operating system. Um, anyway, uh, so where was I? Uh, so the bottom two gig is, uh, is called the code, code heap. So when it, uh, it puts global variables and it puts uh, um, code in the code heap, um, it, it keeps track of which task owns it so that it frees it. Um, that's because, uh, do you understand if I say ASM uh, here, uh, call, let's say, uh, DU8 testing, comma zero. Actually, I shouldn't have. Um, so uh, we have code trace on. That's why. Uh, here are two bad labels. Um, push RSI move RSI comma here. Uh, call address put string that's an import um, look at the example code to learn these things um, I, I don't have to I, I, I should do ES um, okay so so I just made some uh, code uh, let's unassemble um, unassemble works with uh, for um, for functions you put an ampersand if it's a assembly if it's a C function you put an ampersand in front otherwise you put um, just the assembly symbol and for assembly you can only have uh, the symbol defined once for C symbols you can redefine them and it overshadows so uh, uh, let's see we want unassemble here too so um, when we unassembled here too, um, oh, we have code trace still on. Code trace off. Now unassemble here too. Okay, so here's the push. Um, lo look at this. It, it loaded a 32-bit value. That's because it's in the code heap. Um, and then it did a call. This is a 32-bit uh this is a 32-bit call because it's in the code heap. If I didn't have a code heap, these I would have to 
um, work a lot harder I would have to use more instructions than it does a pop I never there's not a uh, there's not a uh, most operating systems have kernel in the upper memory I don't have that I just put all code mixed up in uh, in in the lowest uh, So we just it just printed testing right there. Um, so I, I put all all code in the lowest uh, two gig, um, but uh, I can allocate big chunks. Uh, um, actually, I, uh, memory can get fragmented because I don't use I I, I always identity map. Um, now I give lectures on uh, on if you want to play with page tables I, I set it up if you want to play with ring 3 I set it up if you want to play with PCI interrupts I give lectures on that in screen memory and uh, timing instructions and some uh, some tricks so you, you probably want to uh, look at those um, so uh, all it's identity mapped so all all tasks on all cores have access to all memory at all times. Um, so uh, uh, there's some device memory uh, in a gap. Um, so uh, the lowest two gig is a code heap. Then there's some data. Then there's a, a gap for 32-bit devices. I, there, I don't really do any PCI devices. Then uh, it, it can go up to, uh, I think, 64 gig or something. Or I forgot, 128 gig, what did I say? Um, these are dynamic. Uh, you, can, you can change the limit. Um, anyway. Uh, I want to show one more thing. Um, what was I going to show? Okay, so uh, Control Alt Escape creates a new task. Alt V makes it vertically tile. Let's get rid of one. Shift Shift Escape Alt V. Okay, so now we have two tasks. Now let's say I sixty four. Let's say uh, let's do I. There is no I symbol. So if I say I 64 I equals one, two, three, I just made a variable I. Okay, now it's one, two, three. If I come over here and say I, that doesn't exist. Um, now, uh, what about J? That doesn't exist. Now, if I say Adam, this uh, Adam sits in a server loop and he will compile code for you. Adam J. Now, since everybody inherits Adam's symbols, if, if Adam defines a, um, a uh, global variable J, suddenly J equals uh, 567. Um, suddenly, everybody has J available because they, everybody inherits his symbols. So he has J now. Um, you, can, uh, you can do a map of all symbols. Um, alphabetical order um, I keep everything um, I uh, when I had a Commodore 64 that book told what everything did and that's what my goal is